I always thought if I hadn't studied textiles, I would have loved to have studied pottery. I am obsessed with ceramics and I have far too many. So I thought this year, it's not too late and I signed myself up to our local pottery workshop. I brought Mike along with me because I was a bit nervous. I felt like being a kid again, going to swimming lessons. If you weren't an anxious kid who could not swim, then I'm sure you don't get that reference. Anyway, we booked on to a four week beginner course. George, our tutor, started by giving us a quick demonstration, showing us how to throw on the potter's wheel, centering the clay, making a well, compressing the base, pulling, and finally removing the slip and generally tidying everything up. I went in with a very low expectation and I was pleasantly surprised. We were actually able to keep the clay on the wheel. Or at least I could. <laughs> but this was why I brought Mike along. He never takes himself too seriously and makes sure I'm having fun. <laughs> After leaving them to dry to leather hard, we would then trim them. Trimming was also somewhat easier than I thought it was going to be. The next stage would be to bisque fire them. Fired, our little pots looked amazing. I couldn't believe how good they looked. Every other aspect of pottery had gone surprisingly well. So I came to this final lesson with absolutely no concerns. Painting on some glaze, how hard could that be? With our little pots painted with glaze, we left them with the technicians to be fired. I thought mine were going to look like this. And the reality was this. What happened? I was horrified at how the glaze had come out. It was so messy and it just didn't do our throwing and trimming any justice. This was not good enough. Okay, I know I'm being a bit dramatic. Some of them were not that bad, but I really did have higher hopes than this. Mike called it a day happy with his little pots and the experience. I, on the other hand, was completely disheartened and furious that I had slipped at this last hurdle. There was only one thing for it. I booked onto the advanced class. The class was mostly the same, but we got to choose what we made this time. I was pleasantly surprised to see I hadn't lost any of the skill that I had learned previously with throwing. And it was so much fun to try with a bit more clay to produce a different form. I wanted to make my cats and bowls and maybe try something a little bit taller, so I made a couple of jugs. These were then left to get leather hard before trimming. They were then bisque fired. Fresh from the kiln, they looked superb. Now if I could only get a glaze I was happy with. I had scoured Pinterest. I'd found my inspiration. I was going to get this glaze right. And I was pleasantly surprised. I was quite happy with how this glaze turned out. This was significant progress. A complete accident, but progress. You see, I used glaze under a clear glaze instead of an underglaze. That's why the colour is so transparent. Luckily, I kind of liked it, but could I really say this was good enough? If it was a complete fluke? I mean, I wasn't horrified, but it still wasn't good enough. Down the rabbit hole I fell. I got in touch with a friend of a friend who I knew was a great potter. Her name is Jude, and she is a one-woman show who runs Tea with Jude. She produces the best mugs. Please go and check her out if you're looking for some new mugs. Anyway, I asked Jude if she could teach me about glaze. She graciously showed me how she prepared her bisque fired pots with sanding and wiping down, how to sieve and mix glaze when doing batch dipping, and then finally, how to glaze. We spent a few days glazing hundreds of mugs, plates, bowls, bells. You name it, we glazed it.
With this little bit of experience under my belt, I knew I could do a better job. So I booked on to an intermediate course. And so the process of throwing and drying and trimming and firing commenced yet again on the journey to figure out how to glaze. It had been a minute since I had thrown and I was finding the amount of clay a bit tricky this time. George, the wonderful teacher, encouraging me the entire time, listening to my crap. And fixing all my mistakes. Thank you, George. I also tried pulling handles for the first time. With everything I'd thrown now dried to leather hard, it was time to trim. I realise this has been a bit of a saga on glaze, but let me tell you how much I love pottery. Throwing on the potter's wheel is a completely unique experience from any other craft. I urge you to have a go if you've ever had the inclination. Once again, the first firing left me enthusiastic about the latest collection. This was a bottle that went a bit wonky. I put a handle on this bottle and a handle on this candlestick holder. This was a lidded vessel I made. I also made two cat bowls that I forgot to film. Okay, time to glaze. I dipped these three in green and then topped the wonky one with crystals. Then decided to do the top of the bottle with crystals too to see how it would look. For the candlestick holder, I did an underglaze of white and then put crystals on the top. Then for the lidded vessel and cat bowls, I did an underglaze of white with a black decoration also in underglaze, and then dipped in a clear glaze to finish. And the results? It was a mixed bag. The black and white collection turned out beautifully. It could have been a bit neater and the clear glaze could have been a bit thinner, but I really couldn't ask for much more than this. The green bottles also came out well. This one, not so much. The mix of the crystals I don't think worked and well, the candlestick holder clearly needed a clear glaze over the top. But at the end of the day, I'm happy with where I got with my glaze. If you've liked this video, then please consider subscribing. I'm sure I'm going to be doing a lot more work on my pottery. And if you want to find out more about my latest projects, then head over to Instagram and give me a follow there. Until next time, go and make something.